wait till people kind of get on here. Hopefully I don't get flagged <laughs> for a little rocking out uh, action here. Uh, welcome. Tonight we're going to be painting rocks. So if you're here with me, let me know that you are here in chat. If you are new here, um, again, welcome. My name is Paige. I'm the chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at Gumption. And as you can see, this is my messy office today. So I thought I would just show you the real deal. I didn't want to mess around with my green screen. So, uh, so like I said here, we're going to paint rocks tonight. Tonight's class will take about an hour. Usually that's kind of where they settle. And uh, this is a good class for beginners. We're just going to be having fun playing with paint. We're not even going to draw anything necessarily. We're just going to slap some paint down. And we have no references for this class other than what I'm going to show you here uh, on the camera. If you have any questions, please throw them in chat. And again, if you're just tuning in with me here, go ahead and let me know that you're here. Say hello to us while you're hanging out. And if you're curious about our stream calendar, you can check that out there. Yeah, so I think we're probably good to kind of get going. Looks like Laurel is here and that's great. We might be having some technical difficulties on that end. It looks like but we will kind of get started. I'm going to show you um, a few different kinds of rocks formations that will kind of hopefully inspire you. And let's see. So let's switch our camera view. This is my studio, my messy studio. Uh, this is a painting I've been working on for a couple of years now. It's time that I uh, got that completed. Kyle, my husband, asked me about that this week, actually. So I think it's time. All right, so let's switch our camera view here. All right, I'm just gonna scoot this back. So I went on to Unsplash and looked at some different rock formations. I think it's really good, uh, especially if you're beginning to use reference and uh, just see what things actually look like in the world. Don't rely on your memory because you know how memories are so you can see here we've got some uh, very kind of squared off imagery here where we have these um you know cuts into the rock here and tonight i'm going to be using i think i'm going to really try to use some of these flat brushes so if you have some uh, you can use those tonight if not no worries so we'll look here. Here's some more uh, rocks that I thought were kind of inspiring uh, that I found on Unsplash. And you can see I really like this structure here. So we just have lots of color variation and uh, nothing is perfect. Um, there are cuts in our rocks here. And that's what's great about painting rocks is that they're very organic. And last week, uh, Jan had requested um, well, I was talking about rocks and she said she would always love to paint rocks. So that is how we got our topic for this evening. So if you uh, have things that you'd like to see in our class, then go ahead and throw it in chat and I'll definitely keep it in mind. As you can see here, of course, these are rounded off rocks, but they're still beautiful. They come in a wide variety of colors and you can see some great lighting and shading here. And this is sort of like Stonehenge here. So we'll probably do one of these rocks and play with light a little bit and texture. Again, some more colorful rocks, but these are more jagged. And we did a painting like this not long ago where we used rocks that were very similar to this, but you can see how they're round and cut. And lastly, I was really attracted to this potato looking rock. And so we, if we have time, we might get there. So maybe we'll start with a rock kind of like this, and then we will, I'm just gonna scoot this over. We will get rolling. Now, uh, today I got an order from Blick. I was out of watercolor paper for this class and uh, they don't carry this at Hobby Lobby anymore. I'm not sure why. 
but I have some new paper to test out. These, this is hot press paper, which means that it's really smooth, that it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have texture on it. And texture is kind of what holds that water and water gets in the crevices. So this is uh, a little more like cold press paper. And what I really like about this paper is it's very affordable. I think it was like $7 maybe from Dick Blick. So that's a pretty good, good cost point. So I also have some examples of some other rocks that I've done with classes in the past. And you can see we have a variety of colors that we can use. So if you have burnt sienna, you may want to get that wet burnt sienna and maybe um, ultramarine blue to start. And we'll get to painting tonight. All right, so I'm gonna mix up some of my paint here. And I'm probably gonna switch out some things here. You think you're organized and then you realize that you are winging it. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up some burnt sienna. We'll do this so you can see. Burnt sienna is this nice, rich, browny orange color. And this mixes really nicely with ultramarine blue too. So I'm going to put some ultramarine blue here as well. A little more pigment here. Okay. So this first rock, we have kind of this half moon shape. And again, you'll notice I'm using this flat brush. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. We'll square off some edges a little bit and bring in our ultramarine blue. And what I like about flat brushes is you can just kind of cut in color, create a sharp face in different areas. What you can also do is you can lift with your brush. So if you tap this on your paper towel, you can lift a little bit and bring light into the areas that you want seeing light. And another trick that you can do that's kind of fun is, so you see I have this plastic card. While this is wet, you can kind of bring out these grasses a little bit and use this as a tool. You might even be able to kind of cut in some edges or create texture. with that. And maybe here I have a sap green. We'll see what we can do here along this edge. So I'm going to let you paint there for a minute and uh, let you experiment here and I'll just kind of keep talking to you and uh, playing here. But you see how we start getting this beautiful color uh, where this paint is mixing. Oh, let's see if we can bring this in. 
it's just really lovely. Again, you could take an even smaller flat brush or round brush if that's just what you have. And you can keep whittling away on your rock. Uh, I think this is kind of a little bit like meditation in a way because we don't have to do, it doesn't have to look like anything in particular. And you can just kind of keep working it. Whereas sometimes some of my classes are much more structured and step by step. This is really kind of a fun exercise and just having fun with color. And just enjoying yourself. Again, if you have questions, you can go ahead and throw them in chat. But if you're just tuning in, we are using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to create this particular rock in watercolor. So like I've pointed out, you know, rocks come in all sizes and shapes and can be really different in how we create them. We can use this as an example here. So I'm just going to use my ultramarine blue and we'll kind of go for it. This is a different kind of rock, but you know, you and kind of create this shape that you like. Maybe we'll, we'll mix a little bit of our burnt sienna with some ultramarine blue to get this nice. You will either get this nice brown color or you can kind of gray it out a little bit more by adding more ultramarine blue in there. And you can start using your flat brush to create edges. And you may find you might need a little more pigment, actually. Or even a darker, uh, darker pigment here. So I'm going to switch up my brush to my handy dandy pink brush. Because it's a good, kind of a good size here. And then don't forget that you have the power to lift. And I always think that this is a wonderful tool, especially in watercolor. If you want to create an edge, you can lift paint. So you take your brush, you tap it on your uh, napkin there, and then you have no uh, water in there, and it will just lift, lift your paint off your paper. And even with a little dry brushing there, you may or may not be able to see that, but it can kind of create some texture. And that just means, you know, you're moving the paint around, your brush is dry. Let's see if I can make a more pigmented paint here. Kind of this groups not to write paint darker gray brown color
So if you find that you are having a hard time finding things to paint, maybe go out into your back of garden or, you know, if you're on a hike, pick up some rocks and paint them. Or even if you're at the beach, which um, my students, I always wanted to paint shells. <laughs> it was kind of like the last thing I think they ever wanted to paint. Uh, and I don't know if we ever actually had a, an assignment where we painted shells, but, um, you know, it's a great place to start practicing. Uh, sometimes everything else seems a little daunting, but shells are approachable. Rocks are approachable. So let's see. So for this guy down here, He's kind of dry, so I can go in with a smaller brush if I want to, and just add some stippling in there, maybe areas that I want to create a crevice or a dark line. you can just do that. You can also go back in when it's dry, scrub and lift with your paper towel if you want to add just a little more light in places. Kind of fun. So this guy isn't quite dry, so maybe we'll move into a different rock formation. And if you have questions or you have specific kinds of rocks that you'd like to focus on, we can definitely work on that as well. So this one might be a really fun rock to do because it's got some great color in it. And um, also we have some water here. So let's uh, give it a try. So you can, you know, use the brown of your choice. Uh, I'm going to kind of use this mixture of burnt sienna and this is a vertical rock. So you can just, what I like about this brush is you can just kind of draw in your angles. And just get kind of an overall shape in. Does not have to be perfect. And let's see. And I'm thinking that I might, oops. Here goes the brush. I might mix a purple with ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson to get a nice kind of dark purple. And this is drying on me already. to create some angles here. Maybe this guy needs to get a little bit wider.
just have fun with it. You can bring some warmth into your where your sun's going to hit. So I might get a little bit more burnt sienna. But those crispy edges are what are really appealing and make these rock formations really feel like rocks. So again, a great dark color that you can mix is this dark purple if you don't have a dark color. Uh, so that's ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. That was kind of always a staple on my uh, undergrad painting palette. Of course, you can always go back in and create some more darkness if you want to or more angles. Let's see if we can, just for fun, maybe mix some this light water around this. So I have this cobalt teal color. So I have a turquoise color. I'm going to water it down quite a bit. And this is a tip actually that I have given before in classes, but I fail to use it a lot of the time, is putting your uh, a little bit of cloth or your paper towel here on the edge of your paper so you don't splatter all over your paper because I do that a lot. I'm trying to be careful around this edge here. some fun with this water. So how are you doing with your rocks? Let me know if you can break away. I move kind of fast sometimes, so if I'm moving too fast, you can just shout. So this is kind of, we're working a little wet into wet so you can, uh, it will diffuse this a little bit and feel a little bit like water. What's so great about mixing um, ultramarine with a lot of colors is that it creates this really nice natural granulation that also lends itself to rock formations. So, uh, you know, when you're mixing ultramarine with your alizarin and crimson, it has a really nice texture as well as your uh, burnt sienna. It's just really nice. And you can always kind of keep working on this and add angles. And just have fun with it. Yeah, I would say, um, Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine are one of my favorite color combinations. You can create browns, you can create grays with it. And then let's see, our water kind of 
is dry so you can always go back in with a darker pigment and waves are kind of interesting because they're just little spaces in between I feel like so if you ever would like to practice water as well it's kind of fun and challenging all at the same time and then of course if you like using gouache or have access to gouache or a colored pencil you can go in with gouache and use the white to help create that foam. You may not be able to see it so well here because this is pretty, it's pretty light. But there's an, another example of another rock that you can create. Let's see, we're gonna zoom out here. So we have this guy who doesn't look much like a rock necessarily, other than a really nice blue something rather. So let's see if we can kind of fix that. Sometimes it's just a matter of adding another color and a hard edge. What do you think? Is it starting to look more like a rock? And, you know, like my friend Colin, he goes mountain biking all the time and he's out in the mountains all the time. He probably sees some great rock formations. He probably even takes pictures of them be my guess and he could probably do this in his sleep so really have fun and experiment with shapes and colors and forms let's see if we can scroll back to and if you need me to slow down, all you have to do is say so. So I'm really interested in this uh, rock formation because um, we've got some great light here and some color and um, definitely some crevices and things that are really interesting. So we'll kind of explore this shape. And I'm going to use uh, ultramarine blue here, or I'm sorry, not ultramarine burnt sienna and should I use a different paper here let's do that so you can kind of draw in with your your paintbrush here you've got some jagged edges and, you know, it's been a while since I've talked about moving the bead of paint or water. And this is what I would classify as the bead. So if you want kind of this smooth transition here, you kind of keep moving that bead. And if you want, you can even get a little bit of your ultramarine blue and start introducing that into your cliff this guy is pretty dark at the bottom which means i'm going to have to get more pigment mixed 
try to do this real quickly before this guy dries. Look at that paint move. Isn't that cool? And you could kind of do this all the way up. Let's see. This is drying a little bit on me. I'm going to mix a little bit more blue with this to create more of a gray, dark blue color. Kind of let that work its magic. It's kind of drying here a little bit. On me. But it would make, you know, it would make uh, researching rocks much more interesting if you got to paint in class. If it wasn't your um, interest, if you could paint it, it might make it really fun. So I kind of added a little bit of green into this. And you can kind of see how this changes the color a little bit. Again, don't forget that you can pull out pigment and color. With your brush or scrub and lift. Some paints are more staining than others, and so they're more difficult to lift a little bit, but as you kind of work with your pigment and paint more, you kind of will figure that out, which ones lift easier. So this doesn't look like much right now. It actually would be kind of a fun abstract uh, painting. But we're building this rock face. See if I can find my smaller brush. What did I do with that? So if you're looking, you know, for some different brushes to use, maybe create some different techniques, don't be afraid to look into flat kind of brushes. These are Trakel brushes. They're golden Taclon brushes. And we still have uh, some drying that's going to go on. I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to whip out my hair dryer to get this to dry. But you can see we have some real, let's see if we can focus on this a little bit better. 
I have some really beautiful granulation that's happening here that also, you know, rocks have lots of texture. And so this is creating texture that just lends itself to feel like a rock, right? So if you have that happening in your rock, keep it because it just makes it that much more kind of rock-like. You could also use salt as well if you wanted to create some texture, but keep painting. I'm going to mute myself here and then uh, I'm going to dry this. So it might give you a little bit of time to catch up here if you're behind. Let's see. Okay, so, um, you know, if you have, I really want to keep some of this texture in here. So I'm going to try not to paint that and just leave it alone and kind of paint around it. But once you're kind of dry, then you can continue to go back in to your rock face here and start crafting it. So you, if you've been on this channel for a time, you know there's that 80%, 20% rule where it feels like 80% of the time your painting doesn't look like anything and then till the last 20% starts looking like what you meant it to look like. So um, as you paint along in your painting journey, definitely don't beat yourself up uh, as you're painting along because you're transforming your piece of paper and oftentimes there's that really ugly stage that uh, we all experience. So, uh, so if I wasn't clear, I'm just gonna kind of summarize this really quick. We laid down some pigment. Uh, we used our paint brushes to create kind of these horizontal lines of color uh, because if you can see this image here, you see we've got some horizontal lines of color and you can go back and start adding crevices that you want and shading once it's dry and really start crafting this face. And so that is what we're going to do next. I uh, am, let's see, I'm still using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to create these colors. And so this kind of, this area got lost on me because it was wet and it just spread. So I'm going to go back in and kind of shape this. And if you find that you have too much, it's too dark or something, you can always just lighten it up. You wet your brush and kind of I'm not sure if I'm liking that, but don't despair if you find that you have something that you don't love. Just keep working your piece. And in this class, you know, we're not working, looking for perfection. We're looking to enjoy painting. Let me 
let's see. You can tap in some of these kind of crevices. And um, you probably also heard me say warm light, cool shadows, cool, cool light, um, warm shadows. So here you can see we have uh, some warm light. And some cool kind of shadows here. So you can kind of let that be your guide as well. But if you decide to do some plein air painting this summer, uh, I want to see it. And you'll have to share it with me online. And I'm just kind of putting in these horizontal lines here to create kind of these ledges. And if we have a little time here, I may try to do demonstrate the water here that this is. So it can kind of wind up looking like something. Let's see, we have a comment here. Thanks, Colin. So Colin says that the rocks have lots of great color and um, Thank you, they do. And that's what's kind of nice about when you mix these colors. And uh, sometimes they don't have to be perfect. Sometimes I put hot pink in places it does not belong just to kind of have some variation because we have some nice kind of greenish colors going here and blue grays. And that is kind of the beauty of watercolor as well because it sort of mixes and it creates its own colors and if you don't know what kind of colors to have on your palette um, burnt sienna definitely should be one and I really do think ultramarine blue should be one as well they are good staples to have. So now I'm just kind of going back in with some burnt sienna to create some variation of this color because right here there's a little bit of shading some shadows here. It's a little bit darker. And this can kind of, like you can see in this area, if I add, this might remove a little bit of paint, but if I'm adding this color here, you really start filling this edge a little bit, don't you?
So I don't want to get too much in this area because I'm loving this granulation in these areas, but up here. Can add a little bit here. And I think another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce some yellow ochre. I don't know if you have uh, yellow ochre in your kit, but it's also another great color for outdoors. Um, it's kind of like a yellow mustard color. So I'm just going to put it out here. If you've been painting for a while, I'm sure you know. As you can see, it kind of looks uh, maybe orangey in this light. Hopefully not. It's a little bit more, a um, little more opaque maybe. Uh, maybe not as transparent. But what we can kind of do here is introduce this color in some areas as well. And if you want to kind of create some foliage, there's a little bit of kind of grassy. You can use a toothpick. You can use your skinny brush that you should have in your arsenal. <laughs> you could probably use your Ma Maverick card if you want. <laughs> And if we want to, we can even add some color into that. Oops. Put the right side of your brush in the water. Might just kind of add some. This is a mixture of um, Ultra and Burnt Sienna. So hopefully you find this to be kind of relaxing because it is, um, you can't really screw it up. You know, you can just kind of keep whittling away. with the process here? Oh, I know why I mixed this. And this area is kind of bugging me. And I really want it to recess. So I've mixed this dark purple color. To try to really darken this area here. Sometimes I'll just tap uh, paint in there so it'll just stay instead of moving the paint around because it'll move that bead around and it will create a light spot there. And I'm sorry if you can hear my girl Lucy. She's meowing at the door. Cats don't like closed doors. So I'll just add a couple more dark spots here and then uh, we can take a skinny brush 
and add some crevices if y'all want. And then I thought maybe since we're hanging out here together, I would try to add a little bit of water to this. So I will try to be speedy and take my one of my dark colors here with my skinny, skinny brush. And just, hopefully this is dark enough. lines. This is a great time in your life where you don't have to do a straight line. It can be as crooked as you want it to be. But this is also, you know, it's re it really is good to look at reference. Um, just so you know how things kind of work and are put together. Uh, my friend Colin, he draws a lot of nature stuff, and he doesn't actually really need to use reference for what he is doing. And his stuff comes out really lovely, but that's because he spends a tremendous amount of time out in nature. So that's probably good for this for now. So I'm going to see if I can add a little bit of water in here, see what happens. So I'm gonna use my really pretty turquoise colors and sometimes if you need it to be a little bit darker, I do have this color called sodalite that is like this dark navy it would be the same as a Payne's gray color. So I could just add this to this teal color or turquoise color. You can mix it on your palette or on your paper. kind of darkened that one, didn't I? And water is sometimes kind of like rocks too, in that we have variations of color uh, value. And I like kind of shaping water by using kind of the negative space so you can leave this white area to represent the the wave or the water there the white of the water Uh, one of the things I do want to do with you guys is a little bit of negative painting. We're kind of painting around areas, so that'll probably be an upcoming online class. Of course, in water, you've got some space uh, where there's just white webbing in between.
and we could probably up against this rock. This is pretty dark here. And it's just fun to kind of watch how this uh, paint blends with the other paint. Of course, the key, I feel like, to ocean waves, which we weren't supposed to be painting ocean waves, but why not since we're here? The key are all the little light colors that come in to the white area. You can just dot it with a small brush and sometimes you'll have darker areas. The other thing that uh, is great about water is the little kind of shadows underneath waves. This might be a little bit of a too thick of a brush here, but sometimes waves leave their own shadows. Okay, so uh, let me know if you have any questions here. We're getting close to that hour mark. Hopefully you feel like you learned a little something about rocks today. Uh, we went through several examples of different kinds of rocks that you can, you can make. And I highly suggest you find a picture of rocks that you really like and just go after it. You have nothing to lose but you might lose it out on a good time to paint. So let's switch back to this other camera really quickly. You kind of see this is a home operation. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and throw those questions down or comments maybe that you might have in the comments below. I think most of you guys are tuning in from YouTube. Awesome. I'm really glad to hear that, Laurel, that it was nice and relaxing. Sometimes it's nice to give you guys kind of a break from uh, the structure, right? Because that's what's beautiful about watercolor. And sometimes I have a hard time doing that myself. So it's good for me as well. If you are new here, um, you can check out uh, the calendar over at IHaveGumption.com. This is where you can see some of my work. And also, uh, I want to say thank you to my Patreon subscribers. You guys are diehards. You're here with me every week, and I appreciate that. Thanks for supporting me and my channel and sitting with me and painting every week. I really appreciate you guys, and I'm lucky to have you in my life, so uh, I hope you're learning something out of that. Also, just a side note, next week is a Patreon live class, so if you are a patron, it's going to be happening probably via Zoom over there on Patreon, so that's kind of a nice opportunity for us to get together and chat. Uh, and so that means we're not going to have anything on the YouTube channel. So you will be missing me next week, but I will be back the following week. And if you have suggestions of stuff that you'd like to see on this channel, please go ahead and throw it in uh, the comments. I'm open to anything just about, and we do a lot of watercolor here, but we can always do colored pencil or something like that too. So keep that in mind. 
And if there's nothing else, I'm going to let you guys go about the rest of your evening. But thank you so much for hanging out with me and painting along. And I hope you have an awesome weekend and I will see you later.